Hello, welcome to episode 225 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 22nd of September. So welcome everybody. I hope you all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today I have some knitting, some confessions, oh dear. A <laughs> um, couple of questions for the Ask Me Anything section. Some information on my shop update this week, which includes yarn clubs and my special fall into autumn sets and some opal yarn. And a little appearance from Jensen at the end of the podcast. And we have matching garments now, so I'm excited to show you those. We've got a couple of make-alongs going on in the Ravelry group and on Instagram. And I'll leave details of those in the description bar down below. But they are Craft 20 a Day and the Craft House Magic Christmas Craft Along. So let's get on with the knitting, shall we? And I have a finished object. This is the Shift Cowl by Andrea Maori, And it is all knitted with my hand-spun yarn, which is lovely. It is made actually flat and then you join it at the back here and I just used a ladder stitch to join those two edges. I have recorded a little video which I'm going to pop up in the Instagram stories and also the um, YouTube shorts as well so that should be in a couple of days time to show you exactly how I've done it but it's basically just a ladder stitch to join those nice and neatly across the back there um, and I've tried to um, match up the stripes that are going across because you've got these larger sort of blips and then smaller blips but it was a little bit more difficult because some of my yarns were thicker than others the um the lighter yarn here was more of a dk yarn than a sport weight so actually this edge was slightly longer because i'd used more of that color on this side but I was able to sort of match it um, pretty closely so I'm quite happy with how it came out. You can see how the join looks on the inside and that's what the cowl looks like all the way around. So I'll pop it on so you can see what it looks like on me. It's quite a narrow hole to put your head but actually that's quite good because it will be snuggly and warm around your neck. That feels really really snuggly in so that's what it looks like on really pleased with how that looks like really pleased with what that looks like although I wish I'd have used the background colour all the way through the cowl um, with the darker teal which I actually have plenty left this one because this yarn that I spun had more variegated tones in the background whereas this colour that I've used that actually worked out quite a big part of the front um, wasn't so tonal it was just a sort of tonal um, all over colour that I dyed after I'd spun it whereas um, this one here was different tones because um, I spun it after it was dyed but I love the shape um, and my favourite bit is up here anyway so that's closest to my face I've just tucked the top bit down here just to sort of make it a bit more snuggly but I'm pleased with how that's come out and I'm actually tempted to spin up some more hand spun um, to make another one of these and there is actually a shift shawl as well so maybe I should do that instead because it, I love the texture of the stitches on this one this is the bind off edge here and it is a eye cord um, which is nice and it's quite a simple knit just knit some pearls really I definitely think that this section or the earliest part of the cowl is my favourite bit of the colours really um, but I'm really pleased that's finished you can see the shorter edge is the bit that goes on the back of your neck and then it goes down to a point at the front but that's all lovely and finished. So the one tip that I was talking about um, on the last podcast, so one of the edges as you're working along, you're doing a lifted increase alongside of an eye cord. And what I did is instead of just doing the normal eye cord knit three, I did knit two, yarn over, knit one, and then on the next row, drop that yarn over so that when you do that lifted increase, you've got enough sort of extra yarn to account for that so the eye cord isn't too tight. Um, so that's a little tip that I used. So my next section is confession. Oh dear. Right. So my parents had come to visit and we went out for the day in Sheringham. 
which is on the North Norfolk coast. And there's a couple of little shops that I always pop into. Um, unfortunately, it was a Sunday, so the normal sort of fabric yarn shop there, and I think it's called Owl Tree Crafts. Um, so that's a shop that I recommend if you are in Sheringham. But I also like, there's a little bookshop on the main street that sort of sells discounted books. And I always pop in there and have a look at the sort of craft books that they've got. And I've popped in and bought myself a few. <laughs> <laughs> which is a bit naughty really but you know they're discounted so it's not it, it doesn't count <laughs> so first of all I'd seen an intarsia knitting book and what caught my eye was this little jumper pattern here of a little spaceship and I thought that'd be brilliant to knit for Jensen um because it's just a really cute it's a really cute little intarsia design and I haven't done loads of intarsia. I've only done sort of Christmas decorations really. So I thought that would be nice to try something new. And also there was a cushion cover, which was a fox as well, which I thought was really good. And I thought that would go with his um, theme in his bedroom. So I definitely thought I had to have that one. So that's a knitter's guide to intarsia knitting. And I'll leave links to the, the books, if I can find them online, in the description bar down below. The second one I picked out was a lace knitting book and this has got lots of different lace stitches and what really caught my eye on this one was actually on the back was a blanket with this gorgeous leafy design. Um, who knows whether I'll actually get round to it but there were a lot of other knitting patterns for um, sort of lace designs all the way through so I thought that would be really handy. And the third one I got was this one dressed in knits and there's 19 sort of garment patterns in here i thought that pattern on the front was really nice with the lace across the top and three quarter length sleeves and what really excited me was this heart jumper which is actually in Taja as well i thought that is absolutely me love this accent heart at the top and i thought i'd maybe do um a darker grey and maybe a black I don't know and with a different coloured heart in there maybe turquoise or red we'll see um, but I thought that was really nice and I liked the little bit of contrast around the neckline and the cuffs as well so that is on my to-do list so those are my naughty confessions for this week and next I have the ask me anything section first of all Candice asked do I wash fabrics before sewing clothes? And the second part, she says that she finds that when she washes them, that they always fray. And is it absolutely necessary or could I use pinking shears on them? So most of the time, Candice, I would say absolutely make sure you wash fabrics before you make some make a garment with them. Um, that is if you're going to wash them in the end. So if you're going to dry clean a particular fabric, like a coating fabric or whatever, I'd get that dry cleaned first before you use it because if there's anything's going to happen, if there's any shrinkage going to happen, it'll happen um, when you wash it or use the dry cleaners first and I always think it's absolutely necessary to do that process of whatever you're going to do to it um, in terms of washing before you actually make your garment so that you're not going to have the shrinking occurring after you actually assemble it and then it won't fit anymore. So the second part you say that it always frays and can you use pinking shears? You probably could use pinking shears but I tend to, if I've, if I've got a fabric is I know is going to fray really badly, I'll use my overlocker just to run over the edge of it um, but you could use a zigzag stitch or like you say pinking shears I've never actually used pinking shears to then put it in the washing machine so I assume that it would stop it fraying um, but I think you'd still have some bits of material come off um, with the pinking shears method but I think if you haven't got an overlocker I'd probably go for a zigzag stitch on the edge of the fabric just to stop it from fraying anymore but absolutely make sure you wash it if you're going to wash it when you've worn it and I always do the same cycle. I normally do my clothes on a 30 degree wash. Um, so I'll do that 30, same 30 degree wash with the same detergent that I use when it's actually made up into a garment. 
So the next question is from Alison and she was saying, have we got any suggestions for a beginner knitting project? Now I think for a beginner knitting project, lots of people go for scarves, but I always think that a hat is a better idea to start with because even though you've got some decreases at the top of the hat, it's a smaller project um, which gets somebody into knitting rather than having a massive great big long shawl and it starts them off on the decreases as well, which aren't as difficult as you think. So I had a little look on um, Ravelry and I found the classic ribbed hat by Pearl Solo. So that gets you into knits and pearls and decreases as well. But it's a nice simple hat. I haven't actually knitted that particular hat pattern myself. But I know that Pearl Soho, I've knitted some of their other patterns and they've been really good in the past. So that's the one I'd sort of suggest. There are some other sort of plain knitted hats that you could go for. But I thought that would get you into both knits and pearls um, and decreases as well. So the next section is shop update. So we have the October Yarn Clubs, that's the mixtape minis where you get five 20 gram minis in a set that are all designed to go together. Um, and those are available on a number of different bases. And we've also got the Power Ballad sock sets, which are 100 grams of yarn and 20 gram mini to knit a sock. Both of those sets are available in Merino Nylon, Merino Nylon and Stellina, which is a little bit of sparkle, a BFL and Nylon as well, and also a DK Merino. So you've got a bit of choice there. Um, so those will be available in the shop tomorrow, the 23rd of September, and I'll leave them in the I'll leave them listed in the shop until the 2nd of October and they will be shipped on the 21st of October. So it's a little bit later than normal just because I've got a lot of advents to get out um, earlier on in October as well. Um, and we've also got the Fall into Autumn sets. That is a medium sized project bag with free motion applique on the front and that will be a sort of a pumpkin -y theme. That will be a brand new design and it will only be available in these sets. Um, and also the yarn will be the similar sort of colours as the design art and I'll put that up on Instagram tomorrow or I'll show it on the podcast next week as well. So those will be available from tomorrow the 23rd of September until the 2nd of October as well and those will be shipped on the 28th of October. So if you're interested in those make sure you follow me on Instagram or sign up to my email list and you'll get an email update or see my post on Instagram about what's going in my shop. This week I've also got some new opal yarn as well but I'm not going to show it to you because it hasn't quite arrived yet but it will arrive by tomorrow I should imagine. Um, so I'll put that on Instagram and on email as well. If you sign up to my email list, you're also in for a chance of winning um, my monthly yarn clubs as well. So I will be drawing for the September ones next week. So watch out for that. So if you sign up before then, you're, you're in for a chance of winning next week's um, prize draw as well. So next I have a little appearance from Jensen. So over to you, Jensen. So this week, Jensen has got his little antler cardigan on. So Adam's mum knitted this for us um, last year, ready for the baby. And it's a one year old size. And Jensen is fitting in it really nicely. He's now 10 months old and he's got a little bit of extra length in there. So he should be still be able to fit in it in a couple of months, I think. Should be there till Christmas, I would have thought. And um, it's a really, really nice little cardigan. So it's got the antler cables round, all round around the neck. And it's very similar to mine, although there are obviously less of them because he's littler than me. So this is the antler cardigan as well. And this is the adult version with the antler cables all the way around the yoke here. Some changes I made to mine. I did some bust shaping with some extra rows uh, around the bust. I wouldn't do that again with a cardigan because when it's open, the front sags down quite a bit. So I would do that with a jumper, but not a cardigan. And I think I made the ribbon a little bit wider at the front. Um, so I made it fit me. So this, obviously this pattern goes from baby size to adult. And um, we've also got Adam wearing a jumper version. Oh, you're getting fed up with mummy talking. <laughs> and this is a jumper version of the same antler pattern and it's purchased as a separate pattern and that also goes from a baby to an adult size as well doesn't it Jensen he wants to play on the grass I think um, so Adam's 
jumper I think I would actually I'm going to put a bit of elastic round to the neck because it, it does gape a little bit when he's wearing it um, so I would advise to make sure that you don't uh, have too much of a stretchy cast on for that one I think Jensen wants to go for a little walk so should we see your cardigan properly on the ground Jensen so Jensen is now indoors because the grass was a bit wet for him to walk around but here he is in his little cardigan <laughs> he's going no I don't want to be on the camera <laughs> but it is very warm and cozy so I won't let him I won't make him wear it for too long um, bless him but you can see how it fits really nicely and I'll leave links to the patterns that I've showed you um, on in the description bar down below as well so thank you very much Jensen so thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I'll see you in next week's episode Bye.